Hello YouTube, this is the Zhiyun or Zhiyun Crane V1 or the first version of the Crane released in 2016. I'm using a Canon 550D or T2Y or KISS X4 in Japan with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. It's set at a wide angle and now it's in the pan follow mode. Click it once, click the center button once, it goes to lock mode which I can control the pan tilt and roll. Oh, sorry, not roll, pan, tilt, and pitch. The roll is you double press it, so you could just, yeah, change the roll axis. Okay. Uh, first off, this was uh, the first time I bought this. I, it seemed working, but after a couple of attempts of stabilizing a, f a camera like this, it would just shut off or enter standby mode like that randomly. So I guess, well, the seller told me it was a rampant issue in the Crane V1s, but soon I discovered it was not just in V1s, but also in V2s or latest or more updated version of the V1. And I have a pretty good guess that it's software related because I discovered that if I just place this one in lock mode, at certain angles, if I press it all the way down in the old firmware, because I updated this, it, it would just shut off and if I just uh, turn this in lock mode turn the pan to uh, I think 1.2 times it would just shut off so I think it is firmware because if it's an hardware issue it would just go uh, away at a certain angle but unfortunately it's not it needs to have a whole turn and then uh, 0.2 of that turn or 20% of the turn it would just shut off or it will enter standby mode just like this so in standby mode, so that's what was happening in version 1.44 firmware. So I updated the firmware to version 1.6 as of uh, April 2019, and it worked flawlessly. I mean, it's good. It's better. It doesn't even shut off, but the or it doesn't even go to standby if I use it. The problem is you should set it in the Zion Play app. I mean, you download the Zion Play app on the Play Store or in your iOS or whatever and connect your phone via Bluetooth to Z this uh, Zion uh, Korean. Okay, once you set it in Bluetooth or once you connect or establish a connection, go to the motor settings and set it to high. If you have a large camera like this, relatively large and heavy, about 800 grams because the lens is a bit heavy here. And if you have a mirrorless camera, you can set it to low or medium, but this one's in high setting because it's large. And it's a bit heavy but the maximum weight payload capacity one is 1.8 kilograms which i don't really recommend maybe 1.5 is good enough that's the maximum 1.2 is a bit average you get the point so that's what happened i fixed the randomly glitching issue of shutting down at certain angles by updating the firmware i connected a usb port here downloaded some uh zion proprietary software in your pc and just update the firmware just like it's like updating a PIC 16884 or whatever. It's like programming a microcontroller. You just set the firmware. I mean, it's good. But I have a problem, another problem. This one is another software issue, which Zion hasn't fixed. Okay, I discovered this while charging the batteries of Zion Crane. Okay, charging it to its full capacity. After charging, I discovered that once it's a full charged battery, it will shut down. I mean, if I just turn this, or I just restarted this, turns on, it would automatically go to its initial state, and it would stabilize the camera. It won't shut off. That's good. But if it's in full battery, it will go to standby mode. You must consume the battery for a while in order to have it stable, or at least 80% of the battery life or the battery capacity should be should be utilized. You don't have to charge this in full because if you charge this in full, the, the gimbal would go erratic. I measured the voltage between this using a multimeter and each cell has 4.16 full charge, 4.16 volts. So it would add up to 8.32 volts. Okay, but once each cell drains to 4.14 volts, it becomes stable. It turns on, doesn't go to standby mode. So that's another software issue because just because the battery voltage is increased or it's in full charge, it will just it will shake a bit and then it will go standby mode. Uh, if it's a, a bit depleted or just 80% of the capacity, it will just be very fine until it just runs out, which 
doesn't really happen that much. If you're shooting for two hours, it doesn't happen. But the capacitive batteries with three to four hours, depending on how much you jerk the camera around. But for me, it's good. That's my only problem. You don't fully charge the battery. You don't fully charge it. You just charge it 80% or 90%. Just don't make it 100% because the gimbal will go erratic. It won't stabilize. Well, I got a trick to this. If you accidentally fully charge the battery, you don't just let the gimbal stand still. Tilt it forward a bit so that the tilt motor could just feel a little bit of pressure, a little bit of force going against it. And just turn it on or turn the gimbal on. And and it will stabilize so just like this yeah but once you place it in the vertical state oops sorry sorry I just pounded that once you place it in a vertical state with a fully charged battery it will just shut off or it will just go to standby mode I mean it just goes to standby mode so it's basically shut off it doesn't work that's my issue here and another issue is a mechanical issue this is the last one uh, pretty minor defect though uh, Pan motor has a loose bearing. You can feel the tick of it. I mean, if you tilt the camera or tilt the gimbal forward, you could feel you could feel a gap or a play in the tilt motor going forward as well. It's kind of scary to me because after a few times of shooting this, maybe the the tilt motor, the pan motor. I mean, the pan motor will just fall off. This motor, this motor is pan motor, right? So sorry, just messed it up. But there's a little bit of play there, so it's not that much, but could definitely feel it I mean you could definitely feel it once you're moving around the camera and this setup is heavy it's really not for me but overall I get some really decent footage from here not super stable like a DJI drone I guess it's too artificial this is a bit of natural stabilization I like this stabilization here it's not as superficial or not as super stabilized like a drone which well Let's say we really like, but I kind of like this flavor. It's not that super stable. It has a little bit of very micro, uh, micro vibrations, especially if you're zooming in like 70 millimeters, which I don't really use because it's really difficult to frame that kind of shot. I only use this kit lens and a prime lens of 50mm f1.8. Overall, those are the issues that I'm facing with the gimbal or the Zion Crane V1. And sadly, the software part, they didn't fix in the V2 version. They only fix it in Crane. And I heard Crane 2. I mean, you know, the newly released Crane 2 and the Crane Plus and the Wii Bill and the Crane 3, whatever. They're, or Crane, I don't know. They're still having new issues facing with the same kind of model, you know, software. So I guess the software is not as not as robust as it seems for a gimbal it is prone to error because you know it's calculating stability and it's using uh differential equations and everything just to calculate stability if you know if you're in engineering just like me right here if you're in, if you're into that kind of stuff the pid settings and whatever and the pid in the control systems it's really complicated and the gimbal is not that simple it's an electronic device that has computational power not as much as a computer but it does its work so that's my issue here in this gimbal. Uh, issues are not yet fixed. Unfortunately, the parts of this, it's really rare to find. I mean, I can only find the the slip ring for the motors or the sensors here. I couldn't find the motor itself. If I could find one, I still have to get the, the housing or the bearing. It's really difficult to source the parts of this. But I got this for a very good bargain, and it's an installment plan. It's not just one-time payment. It's really... Well, it's really convenient for me to have this V1 crane, one of the first cranes available to the commercial use. But if I were to choose, I'd get a DJI because, you know, I trust DJI. It's my first time owning a Zion and the Zion is really prone to a lot of errors, especially software and one mechanical so side, I mean this one, and also the batteries. I mean, the software could have handled that, 0 0.02 volts difference, I mean... If it's 4.16 fully charged, it will just go erratic. It won't balance. It won't stabilize. If it's 4.14 partially consumed, it's it's well. I mean, that's that's absurd. But it still works for me, though. Those are just the issues or the quirks that I'm experiencing with the V1 crane. Nothing much, though. It's just a minor kind of thing. But I, I researched it. I tried my best. So, guys, if you haven't, if you are having troubles with the V1 crane, I hope you see this video. And I hope you could like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. And yeah, uh, I also plan to make my own gimbal. 
using the Storm 32, but it's really difficult because you know the parts here are difficult to source out. So that's for another video, but that's the whole thing about view on crane. So if you want to see more footage, yeah, look at my videos. And yeah, that's it. Kind of works. And pretty strong too. You can feel the kick of the motor in the pan motor. So if it's in the lock mode, yeah, it's kind of there. But there's a, a little bit of play here though. You don't want to constantly bash this camera around. Be gentle with it because bashing even the camera won't guarantee you a very good footage. It was it will just jerk the camera as well, make like micro vibrations. So there. And also, if you're video or in a, into video you must know how to walk properly to use a gimbal because a gimbal is not just an automatic machine that can do all stuff for you but the v1 crane has some stuff that you need to pay, uh, pay particular attention to so that's it thank you guys